Okay, so I now will come back. So the essentially section 2.7 in James Stewart's textbook is about derivatives and rates of change. And of course, as you can, of course, the whole text is important. And with this, with this section in text, you start with the concept of the derivative. We have already talked about basically um, limits and functions and all of those things. Now we talk about the derivative. So section 2.7 section 2.7 and that is about basic derivatives derivatives and and rates of change and rates of change right so um, now the concept of the derivative and rate of change is uh, is is closely is is directly related to basically um, to essentially to finding essentially the velocity of an object or essentially the, the all of these ideas that that we talk about in different in different contexts they are essentially the exact same ideas meaning that when we when we talk about the tangent line to a curve when we talk about the tangent line to a curve and also finding the velocity of an object also finding the velocity of the velocity of an object Or basically, um, or essentially, even you could say basically the 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 um, the the slope of a curve at a single point. The slope of a curve at a point. These are all like essentially the same ideas. Now, how they are the same ideas is that, is that first of all, there is, there is essentially, let's call this one, let's call this two, and let's call this three, for example, right? Now, this, this basically, this concept, this essentially, this, this item one over here, which is tangent line to a curve, um, you need to essentially to understand this, you need to understand Two, there is two types of lines that you can draw essentially through a curve uh, at some point or essentially at two points right meaning that there is essentially there is two types of lines you could you could you could we could mention essentially a secant line and you could mention basically a tangent line Now the secant line is essentially is is sim uh, essentially the secant line. For example, let's say that you have a curve like this. So you have, for example, a curve like this, and at this point, for example, and this is for example the x-axis, and this is for example the y-axis, right? The at this point, essentially, on the graph of this function. You note that basically that if I draw a line, for example, something like this, let's make the assumption that this line essentially goes through the graph of the function exactly at this point. Let's call this 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 graph essentially. Let's call this function f, for example. Then basically this point, the coordinates of this point would be x1 comma f of x1, right? That would be x1 and comma f of x1. If this line essentially touches the graph of this function only at this point, which is x1 comma f of x1, then you, you would call this line essentially secant, secant to the graph of, 
to the graph of f at the point p for example at p for example with coordinates x1 and f of x1 right so this is a secant line that means that essentially a secant line goes through the graph of the function only at one point right on the other hand if i had for example something some something like this for example if i had this point over here and if i drew a line for example through these two points i would have essentially this line this this point over here let's call this point x2 and this point over here i can call it q with coordinates for example and so this would be x2 for example so this would be x2 and comma f of x2 right so this line essentially goes through the graph of the function at at two points at more than one point right one of the points is p and the other point is q this line is called basically secant to the to the graph of to the graph of f um, at essentially at these two points at p and q at p and q right so a secant line goes through the graph of the function well i don't exactly know the exact definition but i know that I know that basically that that this line essentially you could call it a secant line and this line you could call it the tangent line okay so now if you take a look at essentially these two lines over here what they what they represent is basically the rate of change so essentially you could use essentially the secant line over here for example this this the secant line in order to so essentially you, you can see that the function essentially from x2 to x1 goes from f of x2 and it goes to f of x1 meaning that f of x1 and f of x2 are two different values right so that means that by changing the input of the function from x2 to x1 the output of the function changes from f of x2 to f of x1 right which means that the change in the output you could call it for example f of x2 minus or essentially you could call it f of x1 you could call it f of x1 minus f of x2 and the change this is the change in output this is the change in output and the change in the input would be essentially x1 minus x2 this is the change this is the change in the input right so that means that basically so that means that basically for this function the average rate of change between x2 and x1 could be you could calculate it by uh, basically f of x1 minus f of x2 over basically x1 minus x2 right this would be the average rate of change between x2 and x1 you could imagine that for example the x-axis for example represents time and the y-axis represents for example the position of a car along a straight road for example right and as time goes by basically the, the position of this car along this road is changing meaning that um, the position of the car at x2 is right over here then it gets closer and closer to zero until at t is equal to zero of course this is no not a realistic model for time because time cannot be negative but then if we just make the assumption that this is actually possible in the case of time um, then basically you can see that the position of the car goes to zero along the road and then as time essentially again as, as time goes by um, uh, basically the, the position of the car starts to increase and gets to this point p over here so that means that the 
the position of the car goes from this point all the way up to this point in this interval of time so then this this uh, difference quotient you can call it essentially the average rate of change of position with respect to time right so that that's essentially how you can you can make sense of the secant line now in the case of the in the case this is a this is and this is of course this is supposed to be a tangent line not the secant line of course this is a tangent line because it goes through the graph of the function exactly at one point right that was my mistake now the way that you can make sense of basically the tangent line is that so essentially for the secant line we said that this is the average rate of change right this is the average rate of change but for this for the tangent line you can say that the, the tangent line essentially expresses the the it's not the average rate of change but the instantaneous rate of change of the of the function with respect to time meaning that uh, meaning that as soon as basically as soon as time gets to x1 x1 second for example then basically um, then the relationship between the relationship between uh, basically the way that essentially position is is changing with respect to time is can be given by essentially by the by the by the slope of this line right meaning that for example if the if the slope of this line was for example 2 then we would know that the, then then we would know that essentially when we get to this point in time then by increasing essentially time by one unit then position would be for example would be changing by two units right so that's that's essentially the uh, that that's also that also represents a essentially a rate of change but this is an instantaneous rate of change so that's how you can use a tangent line and a secant line a tangent line for example you could use it for an instantaneous velocity whereas a secant line you could use it in order to represent an an average velocity between two points in time the tangent line could be used in order to represent the instantaneous velocity of some moving object at some exact point in time meaning that for example you want to know how fast you're going right now that's in instantaneous velocity but then if you want to know for example that that for example you went to the mall you were driving in your car <coughs> and you stopped along the way um, and you you slowed down you you sped up and so on and so forth and you got to the mall and then uh, you got there for example in 30 minutes and the the, the 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 distance between essentially the point where you started and the mall was for example 20 kilometers and you do you did that in 30 minutes so then your average velocity was basically 20 kilometers 20 per 30 20 to 30 for example kilometers per minute this and this is the same thing as two-thirds which is the same thing as two-thirds kilometers per minute right so this is your this is essentially what the, what you were doing essentially as far as your 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 velocity is concerned this is what you were doing in average during that trip which is essentially meaning that every three minutes you were covering two kilometers on average uh, essentially in that trip in that trip where you went from your home to the mall for example you stopped along the way you were speeding up you were slowing down and all of those things all of those things essentially broken down and taking an average the average is going to give you for example two-thirds of kilometer per minute that's the average velocity which is always between two points in time and that's represented by the secant line right um, but then for example 
if along and and the and the thing about the average velocity is that basically if you know that for example you were doing an average two thirds of basically kilometers per minute, there is no way to know what you were doing. For example, when time was for example two minutes at three minutes, if you want to know what was your velocity at exactly t is equal to two minutes, there is no way to know because you don't have enough information based on uh, basically based on this uh, based on your average velocity if you want to know what you were doing exactly at t is equal to two minutes you need your instantaneous velocity and that instantaneous velocity you can get it by basically by finding the tangent line uh, tangent line essentially tangent to the graph of the function exactly at t is equal to two minutes or exactly at t is equal to three minutes and so on and so forth right so now um now calculating basically calculating the average velocity is simple right because you have essentially you 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 have the graph of the function you have essentially this is this is essentially displacement this is time or this is position this is time essentially and you know essentially where you were exactly along the road at any point in time and um you, and 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 essentially and and basically so you can at 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 any point essentially you know essentially at point at at x is equal to x2 you know you know that you were at this point along the road at x is equal to x1 you were at this point along the road you take those values enter them into this simple formula that gives you your average velocity so that that doesn't need any um, complicated calculus or anything like that right um, simple algebra and simple two-dimensional geometry is, coordinate geometry essentially is more than enough to do that sort of thing so for that you don't need you don't need essentially calculus now Calculus essentially was made. Calculate calculus was made for this for the exact purpose of finding your instantaneous velocity. Your instantaneous essentially for thousands of years, for two thousand years, mathematicians and physicists and well scientists they didn't know how to calculate this 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 they could get of course they could get very close there is many ways to get very close but if you want to calculate it exactly what the average what the instantaneous velocity at some point in time is there is no way to calculate it because when you when you get to essentially one point in time there is essentially one position for example f of x1 f of x1 f of x1 minus f of x1 would be equal to zero and there is one point in time so x, there is one point in time x1 so x1 minus x1 would be equal to zero you would be dividing zero by zero so you cannot calculate it right you could take essentially some point very close to x1 and calculate the average velocity for those two points which are very very close to one another and then say that for example that the instantaneous velocity was very close to this average velocity that you have calculated but it's not the same thing really right and there is many functions for which this basically um, for which essentially this 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 uh, um, I mean there is many functions for which you can actually use this method to get very close pick two points and then enter those two points into this formula calculate some average velocity call it the instantaneous velocity you can do that but there is many functions for which you cannot do that meaning that the function is changing really fast it's changing so fast that basically that there is no way to even i mean there is if you give the function to a calculator like desmos or all of these very modern calculators the calculator gets confused it can't even graph the function it will give you uh, 
of something there is no way to make sense of okay so that 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 essentially that uh, basically that method or that strategy is not working is not going to work for those functions whose value is jumping up all of a sudden for example it's changing so fast there is no way to do that using that method so for the same reason for the same reason basically um uh, well physicists scientists and mathematicians they didn't know how to do this type of thing until sir isaac newton and some other mathematicians around 400 years ago 1600 1700s they found essentially the concept of the limit and using the concept of the limit the, the problem could be solved right so so that means that basically if you want to find the the equation of this line you can or essentially if you want to find the the slope of this line you can you can easily calculate it but to find the slope of this line it's impossible to calculate it un unless you know essentially limit the, the the concept of the limit and if you apply the concept of the limit to the same secant line that you have over here you will be able to calculate the uh the the basically the slope of the tangent line it's very simple process you can you can simply do that right now this was all about the secant line and the tangent line and you saw that basically what you can actually do with these with these two concepts right now and the second thing is basically finding the velocity of an object which as you saw essentially is the exact same thing and i was essentially talking about the exact same thing as i was talking about the secant line and the tangent line and well the slope of a curve at the point again is, is is exactly the same concept because as you as you saw I, I was not even aware of that but i was actually talking about the slope of these two lines as i was trying to talk about the tangent line or the secant line or the velocity and so on and so forth so these are really the exact same concepts but in <clears throat> But in different contexts, essentially, they are sometimes given different names for the sake of notation or for different reasons, essentially, right? So now let's take a look at the text here, see essentially what we can find in the text. Okay, so now basically to, to essentially to catch up with the text, Essentially, the text over here says that the problem of finding the tangent line to a curve and the problem of finding the velocity of an object uh, both involve finding the same type of limit uh, as we saw in section 2.1, which was a section that we did in previous courses. This a special type of limit is called a derivative, meaning that essentially the the slope of this this tangent line is called the derivative of this function at this point um, so this a special type of limit is called the derivative and we will see that it can be interpreted as a rate of change in any uh, in any of the in, in any of the sciences and engineering okay so we talked about this you already understand what this what this means now let's let me draw it, the curve that essentially that the text talks about here so that we can we can basically understand it so suppose that you have basically a function like this um, so you have essentially a a curve something like this this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis and your curve essentially looks something like this something like this essentially something like this and so uh, so this is a smooth curve and suppose that there is a line that I draw between for example this point and this point to this curve 
So there is this point of intersection and there is this point of intersection. This point I could call it for example Q and this point essentially this point I could call it for example X and this point I could call it for example A, right? And uh, so the essentially the coordinates of this point would be basically and if, if you call this essentially if you call this function for example f then basically you could say that 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 that, that the coordinates of this point would be x and f of x and the coordinates of this point right here would be you could call this point p and the coordinates would be a comma for example f of a for example something like that right and you already you can already tell that that basically that this distance over here you could call it basically x minus a right you could call this distance meaning that this is essentially an increment in in a essentially which you could call it essentially x minus a this distance over here you could, you could call it x minus a and this distance over here you could call it essentially f of f of x minus f of a because this height over here is f of x this height over here is f of a so this you could call essentially f of x minus f of a right So, which essentially simply means that, essentially, when it comes to this particular curve, when you, when you essentially, when you move essentially from, when you move from x, from a to x, meaning that if you increase the value of, the value of x from, from, from basically from a to x essentially, then the value of the function moves from f of a to f of x so the difference over here would be f of x minus f of a the difference over here would be x minus a right and so basically then um, um, and then you could you could say that if a, if a curve c has equation if you say that basically if a curve if a curve C has equation has equation y is equal to f of x. Now there is a couple of people have asked me in the past not to write down everything. But then basically when it comes to mathematics, you have to be a little bit patient and um, when you essentially when you when you hear something when you when i say something and when you hear it you might hear me right you might be you might hear me wrong and meaning that essentially i make i might essentially make a mistake in saying something or i or i might even say it properly without any problems but then your might might basically uh, essentially change the meaning of what I said and then you could essentially miss the point so when it comes to things like definitions theorems and that sort of thing in mathematics it's better to write things down when you write things down you understand them and and of course when you read something then of course there is a better chance to understand things properly okay so <coughs> excuse me so if you feel that basically that me essentially writing all of these down is going to, 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 to essentially to waste a lot of time, it's actually necessary because otherwise there is going to be a lot of mistakes in your, in your knowledge of mathematics. So, um, um, so essentially that, that's all about that. So we could say that if a curve C has equation Y is equal to F of X and we want to find the tangent line to C and we want to we want to find basically the tangent line 
the tangent line to C at the point at the point for example P which is for example this point over here which has the coordinates essentially A and F of A then we consider a nearby point Q then we essentially we consider a nearby point a nearby point Q with coordinates for example x and f of x where where essentially where x is not equal to a right you saw that if x is equal to 8 there is the problem of dividing 0 by 0 which is which is not going to be which is not going to help you find the the, the slope of the line right and compute the slope of the secant line and compute the slope of the secant line right so that means that basically um, so if a curve c called as curve c for example has the equation for example y is equal to f of x meaning that essentially y is a function of x right and we want to find the tangent line at to c at the point p we want to find essentially the uh, we want to find this tangent line over here which the the line which is tangent to the to the graph of this function at point p which would be essentially this line over here which which would be essentially this line over here this is the tangent line to to essentially to the graph of the function at p which has well essentially give or take the same the same slope as the essentially the same slope that the function has exactly at this point and it goes through the graph of the function only at point p with coordinates a and f of a right we want to find this tangent line then we then essentially what we can do is that we can consider this point q which is near p with coordinates x and f of x right and we note that of course that x is not equal to a and then we compute the slope of the the slope of the secant line which is the line pq so the slope of the secant line so the slope of the slope of the secant line the slope of the secant line pq which is m of pq is equal to essentially the when you want to find the slope of a line what do you do essentially for example let's say that you have a line over here and the, you have this line in this coordinate system and you have essentially some point over here on the line call it x1 y1 <coughs> and you have another point over here for example x2 comma y2 right in this coordinate system and this is a and note that this is a straight line right so to get from this point to this point on the line what i need to do is that I have to move horizontally this much and then I have to move vertically this much right meaning that for so many units of horizontal change I have so many units of vertical change for this line right and you can see that these two distances are give or take essentially the same which means that for for any number of units that you move horizontally the same number of units you have to move vertically in order to get to any other point on this line which means that the slope of the line is one right if basically if i had for example the line for example something like this like this for example rather essentially with a higher slope then basically what happens is that for example if any point i take over here if I, if I want to get to any other point on the on the graph of the function or or on the line essentially you can see that if I have if I move this much horizontally then I have to move twice as much vertically right which means that the slope of the line is equal to 2 for example 
of course this is just for the sake of the discussion it might not be exactly two but we are taking it as two meaning that i'm assuming that this distance is exactly twice twice this distance right that means that basically a line whose slope is two in the case of that line if you change essentially if you increment your x by one unit your y will be incremented by two units by the same logic if the slope of a line is one that means that if you increment your x by one unit your y will be incremented again by one unit right and the same thing essentially applies to lines with other slopes meaning that if your slope is 3 then basically if you increment x by 1 unit your y will be will be incremented by 3 units and so on and so forth right this is the basis of the, i mean this is the only concept that there is in 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 calculus i mean if if you if you if you simply understand the concept of a of the slope of a line that's the only concept that there is in calculus there is the slope of a line and there is four other things that can in calculus there is addition there is uh, subtraction there is multiplication and there is division except for these four things there is nothing more in calculus and there is the concept of the limit of course so without the concept of the the concept of the limit is the heart of the calculus the heart of calculus but but then essentially but then you need to know the basic four operations you need to understand the basic four operations multiplication division addition and subtraction and you also need to understand what what it means to say that the line that the straight line has slope 2 or slope 3 and so on and so forth right so so when I want to calculate for the slope of this line, for example, when I want to calculate the slope of this line, what I do is that is that basically we say that the slope of the slope of this line is equal to rise over run. Rise over run. Which means that essentially this distance over here is your rise. This is your rise. And this is your run. This is your run. Meaning that you're running this much and then you're ri rising this much to get from this point on the line to, to, to essentially this point on the line. That means that for every unit of run, how many units of rise are there in the case of this particular line? And that becomes essentially, if you take the ratio of these two, that becomes the, uh, the, the slope of your line okay so assuming that we understand this so that means that basically this rise how do i com com compute that so the height over here is y2 right the height over here is y1 so y2 minus y1 would be this distance over here this is y2 minus y1 and the the x coordinate over here is x1 the x coordinate over here is x2. So this distance would be basically x2 minus x1. So if I calculate y2 minus y1 by and divide that by x2 minus x1, this is going to be the slope of this line. Right? <coughs> so uh, you can see that, for example, in the case of a straight line like this, the average rate of change between any two points is the same as the instantaneous rate of change at any point on the line because the, the slope of the line is not changing. It's, it's always the same, right? But in the case of, for example, this function over here, it's a curve. It's not a straight line. And so if I take, for example, these two points on the line, I can calculate the average rate of change between these two points. It's going to give me some value, right? This is average rate of change. But then the, the instantaneous rate of change on the line at any point, essentially it's constantly changing because the curve is moving and turning and moving and turning. So the instantaneous rate of change is, is, is continuously changing. 
um, but that that's, that's essentially not the case in the case of straight lines and the, in the case of straight lines between any two points you can calculate the average rate of change on the line between those two points and also that's always equal to the instantaneous rate of change for at any point on that line essentially right <coughs> So, so now I, I forgot where I was in the text. So we were calculating the M of PQ over here. So, so to calculate M of PQ, I can write basically my, the, the, the amount of rise that I have, which is F of X minus F of A, and divide that by the amount of run, which is X minus A, right? And this is how you would find the slope of this secant line the slope of this the second line over here pq right so but our goal here is to calculate our goal here essentially in this process is not to find basically to catch is not to find uh, essentially to find the, the the slope of this line this second line we want to find the slope of this tangent line so how do I how do I do this? I mean, how do I how do I uh, basically uh, how do I get from this point essentially? How do I get from the slope of this line to the slope of this line? You can see that basically, if I take basically, if I take essentially the um, the, the the point essentially x a little bit closer to a the point Q is going to move a little bit closer to P. <coughs> Meaning that if, if I bring the point over here, the the secant the, the secant line becomes essentially this line like this. <coughs> and then again what I could do is that I can get a little bit closer, meaning that I can get over here, and as you can see the, the point Q is again moving a little bit closer to P. So then basically the, the slope of the line becomes rather something like this, right? So you can see that the slope of these lines are getting closer and closer to the slope of this line, which is the tangent line to the graph of the function at this point. So in order to get from the slope of the, to get from the slope of the secant line to the slope of the tangent line, you all, the only thing that you need to do is that either essentially make x closer to a or make basically q closer to p right and so of course you can keep doing this all day meaning that you can you can essentially make your your interval for example one unit then you can make, make your interval half a unit then 0 0.2 unit 0 0.1 unit and then 0 0.01 unit 0 0.001 unit 0 0.000 uh, 0. 0.001 unit, 0. 0.00001 unit, and so on, keep closer and closer. But it's still not going to be the same thing, right? Meaning that still there is, there is this, there is this, uh, distance between them, right? It's still a average, basically, rate of change. So how do I get to exactly, I mean, how do I, how do I essentially, how do I make the points, uh, how do I make the points Q and P exactly coincide, meaning that the two points exactly become one point? And the answer to that, to that question is the, 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 the essentially the repetitive process of, of, of the limiting process if you give this process essentially we humans cannot do that sort of thing it's going to take probably five lifetimes to do that even a simple a single case but if you give this process to the limiting process the limit knows how to do this in just a fraction of a second and and then basically the, the limit essentially gets closer and closer and closer and closer until basically the points Q and P kind of coincide and then in that 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 limiting value essentially becomes the the slope of this tangent line which we have now calculated based on the slope of the secant line.
right? It's a, it's actually a very interesting process, right? So then what we could do is that, so that, so essentially in this process, what we could do, then we, we, we let essentially Q, which is this point over here, approach P along the curve C by letting X approach A. And if M of PQ approaches, if M of PQ, if, if in this process, then M of PQ approaches a number M, for example, then we define the tangent t to be the line through the point p with the slope m, right? So now let me write this down, or probably not really required, but I will write it down so that you have the definitions because you might not have access to the to the text here. So so then essentially what we we could say here then essentially then we then we let Q, then we let Q approach, approach P along C. So essentially what we do is we let Q approach P along C and by letting X, by letting X approach approach a right now if basically m of pq which is this um, slope over here approaches a number m a number m then we define the tangent t Then we define the tangent t to be essentially what we mean by tangent t is is exactly this line over here, which I have, which there is an there is I have drawn an arrow pointing to the line. So then the tangent t. So we define the tangent t. To be the line through P, to be the line through P with a slope M, with a slope M. Now this amounts to saying that the tangent line is the limiting position of the secant line PQ as Q approaches P. So this basically amounts to saying that these are all the original words of the of the late uh, James Stewart. He passed away a few years ago, about 10 years ago, I suppose, 10, 13 years ago. So this amounts to saying that, that essentially that the tangent line, that the tangent line is the position of, is the limiting position, is the limiting position of the secant line, of the secant line PQ as Q approaches P, as Q approaches P, right? And then based on this, we can, we can essentially write a definition, right? Since we have understood this properly, we can write a definition. So then we can say that the one definition, one definition, we can say that basically the tangent line to the curve, the tangent line to the curve, to the curve y is equal to f of x at the point, at the point, uh, 
p with coordinates a and f of a is the line through p is the line through p with the slope with the slope m is equal to the limit of basically the same quotient difference over here f of x minus f of a over x minus a f of x minus f of a over x minus a as x approaches a right and of course this is this is very important to 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 mention that provided that provided that this limit that this limit exists that this limit exists sometimes this limit does not exist right so now essentially these um, these you need to understand them why essentially the definition is written this way what is behind that so that you can work with it if you if you I mean if you if you I mean, if you try to I don't know whatever you there are many different things that students usually do memorize things and that sort of thing I mean that gets you probably somewhere with your mathematics but it's not going to be practical for any it's not going to be useful for any practical purpose because later on um, I mean even if you pass your mathematics exams or whatever the case might be later on you're going to need to use all of these concepts in physics for example and then in physics you have to basically analyze a situation in in that 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 occurs in nature and then uh, based on that situation based, based on the analysis of that situation you need to apply calculus to that situation and then how you apply calculus to that situation depends on that situation essentially the constraints of that situation and so on and so forth and so then basically when you want to use all of these things over there you need to make different changes to the formulas so that your formula makes sense in that context so which means that if you don't understand essentially the if, if you don't understand essentially all the background that we talked about over here which essentially led to this definition then you're not going to be able to use it anywhere which is doesn't really much make much sense really okay so now what we will do in the next video we will take a look at a couple of examples and i will try to show you also the same process on a calculator so that essentially you see how the secant line gets closer and closer to the tangent line the slope of the secant line gets closer and closer to the slope of the tangent line so i see you in the next video with two examples thank you